good afternoon in this lecture we will discuss the behavior of synchronous motor on no load with the losses so in this case we are considering the losses while analyzing or while uh, studying the behavior of synchronous motor while our synchronous motor is on no load condition but with the losses so we have discussed in the previous case that we can maintain the magnitude of ebph and vph same by controlling the amount of excitation given to rotor or the field current now in this case uh, as we are considering or uh, we are considering the losses see this is our uh, stator magnetic axis and this is our rotor magnetic axis so in the previous case when there is no load and no losses both the axes were coinciding each other but now in this case we are considering some losses which are taking place into the system because of the current flowing into the uh, winding and uh, resistive drops so because of that because of those losses these two axes are not exactly coincides with each other but the rotor axis will fall back by the stator axis from the stator axis by an angle delta okay but there is a still magnetism or a rotor is in synchronism with the stator still rotor is moving with the stator with the speed with the synchronous speed that is 120 f by p okay just our rotor is retarded back by the stator magnetic axis by by an angle delta okay so so in this case the magnetic locking still exists between stator and rotor but in such a way that there exists a small angle difference between the axis of two magnetic fields okay so our rotor axis as we have discussed our rotor axis falls back with respect to stator axis by an angle delta this delta is very important thing which we'll going to discuss uh, in a further cases also so and now this angle decides the amount of current required to produce the torque to supply the various losses okay now this uh, delta is also called as the load angle it is also called as power angle coupling angle torque angle or the angle of retardation and it is denoted by delta okay now the magnetic locking is still exists between stator and rotor now in this case because of the losses our rotor is retarded back or fall back by fall back from the stator axis by an angle delta but there is a still magnetic locking between both stator and rotor and our rotor is continuously moving with the stator with the synchronous speed so in this case now magnitude of ebph is equals to vph that we are maintaining by uh, controlling the field excitation and but the only difference is that now ebph will not locate exact opposition with the vph but it is displaced from its initial position by an, by an angle delta now we know our uh, voltage equation our voltage equation goes like this vph is equals to ebph plus ia zs now if uh, we take this uh, difference here now we'll take this ebph to this side of this equation so it will be vph minus ebph is nothing but the losses so the difference between the supply voltage and developed back emf is nothing but equals to the losses taking place in a motor okay now see here in this diagram this is your this is our reference vph we will draw as it is now this is the ideal position of ebph if we consider the ideal case no load no loss case then ebph will be like this but now we are considering some losses into the system and because of this losses the angle delta will come into the picture okay so this this ebph will displace from its ideal position by an angle delta because of some losses into the 
system okay now this evph and vph the difference is nothing but what see from this equation vph minus evph is nothing but ia zs so by drawing this uh, vector diagram this is your vph this is your evph and we have to draw or we have to take its vector addition okay so by parallelogram law this is this this is the vector addition this phasor is a vector addition of vph and evph and this is nothing but what ia zs okay here we are denoted it with the ob now this ia zs is called as the resultant phasor and we are representing it with the erph or we are denoting further it as a erph so this erph is called as the resultant phasor and which is the product of armature current per phase and armature impedance per phase as shown in this figure okay now now see this uh, ebph is equals to vph but ebph will not be located exact opposition with the vph but it is displaced from its initial position by an angle delta as we have discussed so our equation will be like this so ob is equals to izs is equals to erph as we have shown okay so this is the complete explanation about the second case when uh, we are considering our synchronous motor on no load but with the losses so this is the phasor diagram this phasor diagram is very important we have to again you have to draw vph as a reference then because of the losses evph will displace from its ideal position by an angle delta and the difference between vph and ebph this this is the difference and this difference is nothing but the ia zs from our equation and this ia zs is we are denoted by the resultant phasor erph and this resultant phasor erph is the uh, product of uh, armature current into stator impedance okay zs so this is the case when synchronous motor is a uh, is on no load but with the losses now next case is synchronous motor is on load now our synchronous motor is on load okay as load on a synchronous motor is increased there is no change in its speed but the load angle delta will affect so as we are going on loading our synchronous motor the retardation of a rotor with respect to stator magnetic axis uh, is increased that is the load angle delta will increase as load increase the load angle delta will also increase but the speed of a rotor will remain constant now still our rotor is in a synchronism with the stator as delta increases ebph and vph magnitude is same but the displacement of ebph from the ideal position is increased hence the vector difference vph minus ebph is also increased so this vector difference is increased this difference is equals to what iaph into zs now we know this zs is a constant okay so as zs is a constant so to maintain this uh, product or to increase this product the iaph which is the current drawn by motor is also increased this current produces the necessary torque to satisfy the load demand maintaining the magnetic locking okay so this current is also increased now we have here two cases the first one this is a light load case and this is heavy load case now as we have this vph as a reference then sim we are maintaining ebph as a, with the same magnitude as a vph okay by controlling the field excitation now this is a light load condition at a light load condition our ebph is displaced from its ideal position by an angle delta 1 okay 
and we will get er1 ph like this okay now in a heavy load now when we are increasing a load the load angle delta is also increased now if you observe this delta 2 is greater than a delta 1 okay so the ebph is moving somewhat towards this side now if we take the difference of uh, vph and ebph we'll get er2 ph now this uh, magnitude of this er2 ph is greater than the er1 ph okay and hence the current drawn into the second case that is heavy load case that is ia2 is greater than the current drawn by first case current drawn in first case that is ia1 as zs is constant in both the cases we have to maintain this product ia ia zs constant okay this product ia zs is increasing but zs is constant so ia has to increase to maintain this or to increase this product okay and this increase current we are utilizing to satisfy the load torque or increase torque demand so this is the explanation con complete explanation of a behavior of synchronous motor on load case okay so up till now we have discussed three cases that is synchronous motor on no load no losses then synchronous motor on no load with losses then synchronous motor on load thank you